This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and it's all in one time. We don't do them very often. I mean, they're sort of portable all in one computers where the computer is behind the monitor, but you know, I love gaming laptops and gaming products. So when Lenovo said, hey, we have the new Idea Center all in one AIO Y910, you want to review it? I said, sure. Now, the Y is important in front of the 910 because there's also an Idea Center 910 that's just a regular everyday all in one. This is the gaming model, and really, it came out just before Lenovo announced the Legion series, and it really should be named Legion because it's got their new edgy look, and they're really stepping up their game here. There's a lot of nice stuff here big 27 inch display, desktop GTX 1080 inside, Founders Edition card. Core i7 desktop. These are desktop parts, all readily accessible for upgrades after the fact, which, you know, for all in ones, it's usually not an easy thing to do. You usually have to go with the desktop because they're easier to take apart. So, pretty sweet uh, price. You know, it starts at $17.99. Our configuration is the high end one with those specs, and it's $22.99. So, it's not cheap, but compared to other all in ones that are on the market, and even some desktop with monitor bundles, especially if you're talking about a 27 inch. QHD monitor, the price is fair for what you get. We're going to look at it now. So let's start with what you see. Here it is, 27 inch QHD, that's 2560 by 1440 display. It's matte, it's non-touch, which gamers generally prefer. And uh, that's a photograph I took. It has vignetting the photograph itself. So don't worry, the monitor is not dim along the edges there. Now Lenovo says this is an IPS display and the viewing angles to me seem, uh, I'm not sure. It seems a little bit like TN, but like really, really high quality TN. And it's high refresh rate, 144 Hertz. No G-Sync, however, uh, too bad. But overall, you've got full sRGB coverage, 75% of Adobe RGB coverage, and it calibrates nicely. Now, Lenovo has a utility here right on screen. We'll show it to you. It's their gaming center. So you have display settings. This is where you adjust the brightness. You can also use the NVIDIA control panel. There's no quick shortcut on the included keyboard. Now, we have the basic keyboard and mouse, and believe me, particularly the mouse, you just don't want it. Lenovo sells gaming keyboards and mice that are a lot nicer uh, than the ones that come in the box here. But anyway, here's where you adjust your brightness. And there's a couple of different color modes. And I really, game mode is like, ooh, it's, it's kind of hyper contrasty and desaturates at the same time. Design mode, oh my goodness, that's kind of like over the top saturation. I would not choose any of those and just go with the default, which looks perfectly nice and perfectly good. And it's pretty close to a decent calibration. You can calibrate this and get it real close. So if you actually want to use this for some photography work at the same time for editing, it's a pretty nice rate. And we've got your screen refresh setting right here. If you want to just drop it down to 60 hertz for well, stupid games like Fallout 4 that sometimes don't deal with high refresh displays and get V-Sync right, you can do that too. So there you have it. It's a pretty nice display. And as an extra bonus, it can also work as an external monitor for a laptop or another PC. Interesting feature is two HDMI ports on the back. And so it does HDMI in as well as out. The display is bright. It's 324 nits as we measured it. It's more than bright for indoor use, even in a well-lit room like our studio right here right now. Below, there are two 5-watt Harman Kardon speakers, really loud, really full, aiming at you. I, it's superb. If you're gaming and you don't, you know, the folks you that you are living with don't mind hearing the big explosions of a game, and it's, it's, it's a treat, really. Of course, obviously, you can use headphones otherwise as well, and it supports SP diff out and 7.1 Dolby Audio for if you happen to have a home theater system or a fancy speaker satellite system that you want to hook up to it. There are no front-facing ports on here, which kind of would have been nice, oh well, but we've got four USB 3.0 ports on the right-hand side, an SD card slot, headphone and microphone jacks there. And if you go for the uh, optical drive, which some models have, some models don't, depends. it's up to you if you want to get it with that, and you can get a DVD D burner, and that is on the side, and it pops out. On the back, like I said, there are two HDMI ports and two more USB 3.0 ports and an Ethernet port. So in terms of ports, you know, it's a well-equipped all-in-one. And on the left-hand side, there's the power button, uh, the little headphone hanger, and there's a button that you'll use if you want to use this as a monitor for a laptop or something else. All ventilation is on the back side, it kind of vents up, or really vents up. You can see the lattice work there. And the neat thing about this is how upgradable it is for an all-in-one. Check it out. So this is what the back looks like right here. We've got our little killer double shot and 144 hertz monitor stickers just to let you know about what's inside there. So see the Lenovo Y logo? It's not just decor, folks. It does things so you can press it on this side 
it takes some effort to feel like clicking and press it on this side because each of these panels is removable and that's how you get to the stuff inside. And once you press that in so you feel like click, you push down on this section like so. So it's not actually all that painful. Here's the graphics card. See, indeed, big graphics card underneath the baffle. They say this is toolless, so you don't need screwdrivers and stuff like that. So that's why you got like twisty little things here to unscrew the cover. Baffle, you can see the fan of the GTX 1080 Founders Edition under here. So you could upgrade your graphics card. 625 watt power supply. So that's ample for the future. You know, NVIDIA has been trying to consume less power with each generation. So if it can do the 1080 now, and it can with the quad core i7 desktop CPU, it should be ready for the future. So nice there. This is your RAM door here. So these are doors you, you grab it and you yank this off. It's pretty stiff on here. There's two RAM slots in here, DDR4, 2400 megahertz RAM, and it's the shorter size, smaller size, the laptop size, not the big desktop long RAM modules in there. And on the other side, here's your conventional desktop hard drive. It's a two terabyte hard drive on our model. And this little door right over here is your M2 SSD. Boy, these little things are stiff. There it goes. So that's a nice Samsung PCIe SSD in there with pretty good speeds as well. Now getting to the desktop, the CPU obviously would be a bit more room and require a bit more disassembly if you want to upgrade. It is a desktop, again, Core i7-6700, 3.4 gigahertz base clock rate CPU. That's Skylake. I'm sure they'll refresh it with KB Lake 7th generation. Will it matter much for performance? And eh, not so much. So yeah. And performance numbers on both graphics and CPU are just where we expect to see them. And the, the, the interesting thing is to see how they're not that far off from the couple of Core i7 mobile with GTX 1080 cards that we've reviewed in laptops. So it really just says how well, how well laptops are doing relative to their desktop brethren at this point. Before we get into gaming, uh, if you're wondering about monitor tilt, this isn't like the Lenovo 910 all-in-one non-gaming edition. It doesn't have a huge range of tilt. That, the, the, the one that's the non-gaming model goes very flat. It tilts a bit forward, it tilts a bit back. That's all there is to it. So, I mean, it's perfectly fine and adequate, I think, for everyday use. This doesn't have a touch screen, so what would be the point, really, of flattening it on its back and that sort of thing? All right, to test out gaming, we're going to use Witcher 3 because it's the ultimate pig of a game and also Fallout 4, which is a pretty demanding game. But hey, this is a very powerful PC, so we got up the ante a little bit. So you see, this is Nexus Mod Manager. For those of you who play Fallout 4, this is a heck of a lot of mods we have loaded on top of our Fallout 4 game, and they're actually in use in the game. So hey, let's see how it does. And here is another very over-modded settlement. It's keeping up mid-70s to 80s for the frame rate. That's pretty, pretty darn good. And, you know, in case we just go out into the wild, things will get a lot better once we stop looking at all those nice buildings and all those mods. There we go. Now we're going up. Now we're going into the 90s, no problem for the frame rate. So for Fallout 4, that's pretty impressive, especially with all of those mods on board. All right, we have the Witcher 3 here, and we're running this at QHD resolution, 2560 by 1440, so that's pretty impressive. And we're running everything on high to ultra settings in 60 frames per second. And the man on the horse doesn't really have much to say to me. Come on. Talk to me. Talk to me. Well, I'm the pariah here in the world of The Witcher, but you get the idea. This is just really nice and fluid stuff right here. I suspect it could do better than 60, but it's probably artificially capping and v-syncing at 60 frames per second. But you know what? That's good enough for me. For the kind of game The Witcher is, I, I don't see a point to having it run at 100, you know. Let's chase the sheep. Woo, sheep. So anyway, yes. This is a machine that can do anything you want. And even better yet, it's upgradable. So in the future, you can make sure a couple of years from now, it can still do anything you want. So there you have it, the Lenovo Idea Center AIOY910. Uh, it's available now. And again, you know, I like gaming laptops a lot, but if I was going to buy a desktop, the reason I would worry about buying an all-in-one is because I can't upgrade it. This one is so easy to upgrade. And with the built-in pretty nice monitor, a pretty decent monitor, 27-inch, it, it kind of makes a lot of sense in a way. It doesn't take up a whole lot of space. You don't have to buy a monitor separately, especially if you want a nice high refresh rate 
big high resolution monitor it takes a whole lot of boxes so no it's not the cheapest thing on the block but i think the price is very fair especially against the competition so there you have it i'm lisa from mobile tech review be sure to subscribe to our youtube channel for more cool videos and thumbs up if you like this vid